Scotland. Rugged landscapes, ancient castles, and deep Celtic traditions, it's a place rich with history and identity. For centuries, most of us believed we knew the origins of the Scots. After all, isn't it common knowledge that they descended from the Celts, those fierce warriors and artisans whose legacy continues to inspire the world today? But what if that's only part of the story? What if Scottish ancestry is more diverse, even more fascinating, than we ever imagined? Recent studies into the genetics of Scotland are rewriting what we thought we knew. Scientists have uncovered a mosaic of influences that shaped the modern Scottish population. From mysterious Picts and Viking settlers to Mediterranean traders and Anglo-Saxon migrants, Scotland's ancestry is far more complex than the old Celtic-only narrative suggests. This isn't just about DNA, it's about people, journeys, and histories intertwined over thousands of years. Each strand of ancestry tells a story of migration, conquest, and cultural exchange. By the end of this video, you'll see Scotland not as a singular heritage, but as a beautifully intricate tapestry. So, let's uncover the surprising origins of Scottish genetics and rediscover the rich, interconnected history of this remarkable nation. To understand Scotland's genetic origins, we must start with its first inhabitants, the Picts. Often overshadowed by the Celts in historical accounts, the Picts were the mysterious painted people who lived in Scotland long before recorded history began. They earned their name from Roman accounts, describing their intricate tattoos or body paint. But who were they, and how do they fit into the genetic makeup of modern Scots? For centuries, the Picts were an enigma. They left behind no written language, and much of what we know comes from archaeology and Roman records. However, genetic research has given us a clearer picture. The Picts were not just an isolated group, they formed the bedrock of Scotland's genetic heritage. Studies of ancient remains show that their DNA still runs strongly through many Scottish bloodlines, particularly in the Highlands and Northeast. The Picts were a resilient people. They fiercely resisted Roman invasions and successfully held their ground, even as neighboring regions succumbed to the might of the empire. They established settlements, carved intricate symbols into stones, and played a vital role in early Scottish society. What's fascinating is how their genetic markers remain distinct enough to identify today. This suggests that rather than being absorbed entirely into other groups, the Picts left a significant and lasting genetic legacy. In modern Scotland, traces of their ancestry persist, especially in regions where their influence was strongest. While the Picts eventually merged with other populations, their impact shaped early Scotland's culture and identity. In a sense, they were the first Scots, a foundational layer of ancestry that modern genetic studies are only beginning to uncover. So, the next time you think of ancient Scotland, don't forget the Picts. Their story is one of survival, adaptation, and a legacy that lives on in the DNA of modern Scots. They remind us that Scotland's history didn't start with the Celts, it began long before. Let's turn to one of the most dramatic chapters in Scottish history, the arrival of the Vikings. These fearsome Norse warriors, with their iconic longships, are often remembered for their raids and conquests. But in Scotland, the Vikings weren't just invaders, they became settlers, leaving an indelible mark on both culture and genetics. The Viking Age began around the 8th century, and Scotland's Northern Isles, Orkney and Shetland, were among their first targets. Over time, these islands became Norse strongholds. The Vikings didn't merely plunder, they built communities, farmed the land, and intermarried with local populations. Their influence soon spread to the mainland, particularly along Scotland's northern and western coasts. Genetic studies reveal that Viking DNA is a significant component of Scotland's genetic makeup, especially in the northern regions. In places like Orkney and Shetland, Norse ancestry can account for up to 25% of the population's genetic heritage. Even in the highlands and lowlands, Viking traces are detectable, a testament to their far-reaching impact. But the Vikings' legacy isn't just genetic, it's cultural. They introduced new technologies, such as advanced shipbuilding and farming techniques. Norse mythology and storytelling also found their way into Scottish traditions. Place names, like Kirkwall and Orkney, still bear the imprint of Viking influence. 
What's remarkable is how the Vikings blended with existing populations. Rather than erasing local cultures, they added to them, creating a unique Norse Scottish identity that remains evident today. While their rage brought fear, their settlements brought connection, trade, and integration. The Viking era in Scotland eventually faded, but its legacy endures. From the surnames of descendants to the genetic markers in modern Scots, the Norse influence is a reminder of how migration and settlement have continually shaped Scotland's story. So, when we think of Scotland, we must remember the Vikings, not just as raiders, but as contributors to the rich genetic and cultural tapestry of the nation. When people imagine Scottish ancestry, the Celts often take center stage. Their legends, art, and language form the backbone of what many consider true Scottish culture. But while their impact on Scotland is undeniable, the idea of the Celts being the sole or even dominant contributors to Scottish genetics is a misconception. The Celts arrived in Scotland around the first millennium BCE. Originating from Central Europe, they brought a shared language, culture, and warrior ethos that would heavily influence early Scottish society. They formed clans, worshipped nature gods, and introduced a unique artistic style that remains iconic. Their influence is particularly evident in the Highlands, where Gaelic, descended from Celtic languages, persisted for centuries. Genetically, however, their story is less straightforward. Modern DNA studies reveal that while the Celts contributed to the genetic makeup of Scotland, they were far from the only influence. In fact, much of what we consider Celtic in Scottish culture may have more to do with shared traditions than with actual genetic dominance. For example, the Highlands exhibit stronger Celtic genetic markers than the Lowlands, but even there, traces of Pictish, Norse, and Anglo-Saxon DNA are prevalent. It's also worth noting that Celtic is a cultural term as much as a genetic one. The Celts were a diverse and widespread group, and their traditions were adopted and adapted by many other populations over time. In Scotland, their legacy became entwined with that of the Picts, the Vikings, and other groups, creating a hybrid culture that's distinctly Scottish. While the Celts may not have been the exclusive ancestors of the Scots, their impact on the nation's identity is profound. From the enduring popularity of Celtic knotwork and music to the stories of heroes like Cudgelaine, their cultural footprint is enormous. In the end, the Celts' role in Scottish history is both significant and symbolic. They represent one of many threads in Scotland's complex genetic and cultural tapestry, a thread that connects Scotland to a broader, pan-European heritage while remaining uniquely its own. Perhaps the most surprising discovery in the study of Scottish genetics is the presence of Mediterranean and Roman DNA. At first glance, it seems improbable. How could people from such distant regions have contributed to the genetic makeup of a land so far north? Yet history tells us otherwise. During the height of the Roman Empire, Scotland, then known as Caledonia, was a remote frontier. The Romans never fully conquered the territory, but their influence was felt along the borders of the empire. Hadrian's Wall, a massive fortification built in the 2nd century CE, marked the edge of Roman Britain. Roman soldiers stationed at the wall often interacted with local populations, and these interactions likely included intermarriage. Even beyond the Romans, Scotland's ties to the Mediterranean came through ancient trade routes. Archaeological evidence reveals that goods such as wine, olive oil, and luxury items made their way to Scotland, suggesting that traders from the Mediterranean ventured to its shores. Along with goods came people, whose genes mingled with local populations. What's particularly fascinating is how these traces of Mediterranean ancestry connect Scotland to the broader history of Europe. They serve as a reminder that even in ancient times, Scotland was not isolated. Instead, it was part of a web of trade, migration, and cultural exchange that spanned continents. In modern Scots, these Mediterranean genetic markers are subtle but detectable. They are most likely found in regions closer to ancient trade hubs or along routes where Roman soldiers may have settled. These findings challenge the idea of Scotland as a land untouched by external influence before the medieval era. Culturally, the Roman and Mediterranean presence also left an impact. Roman engineering inspired some local innovations, and the introduction of Roman coinage and goods influenced early Scottish trade practices. 
While their stay in Scotland was brief compared to other regions, their legacy endures in ways that are still being uncovered. The discovery of Mediterranean ancestry in Scotland's genetic profile is a testament to the interconnectedness of ancient civilizations. It shows us that Scotland's history, like its DNA, is woven with threads from distant lands, making its story all the more remarkable. While much of Scotland's identity is tied to its Celtic and Pictish roots, two other groups left their mark on the nation's genetics, the Anglo-Saxons and the Normans. These groups derived later than the Celts and Picts, but their influence is evident in both the genetic makeup of modern Scots and the cultural evolution of Scotland. The Anglo-Saxons, Germanic tribes originating from what is now Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands, began migrating to Britain in the early medieval period after the fall of the Roman Empire. While much of their settlement focused on England, they also made their way into southern Scotland. In the lowlands, especially, Anglo-Saxon DNA has been found in higher concentrations compared to the highlands, which remained more isolated. The Anglo-Saxons brought not only their genes, but also their language and customs. Over time, these cultural influences blended with existing traditions, particularly in the lowlands, leading to the development of early forms of Scots, a language distinct from Gaelic and English. Then came the Normans. Following the Norman conquest of England in 1066, their influence began to trickle into Scotland. The Normans, descended from Norse settlers in France, were known for their feudal systems and architectural innovations. They didn't just conquer, they settled, married into local populations, and reshaped the socio-political structure of Scotland. Genetically, the Norman impact on Scotland is subtle but present, particularly in southern regions. While they didn't contribute as significantly as the Anglo-Saxons, their presence left a distinct mark. Their introduction of feudalism also reshaped the Scottish lowlands, creating a divide between the more feudal south and the clan-based systems of the highlands. The legacy of these groups can be seen in Scottish surnames like Armstrong and Wallace, which have Anglo-Norman origins. Even Scotland's medieval castles owe much to Norman architectural styles, showcasing how deeply their influence seeped into the fabric of the nation. Together, the Anglo-Saxons and Normans added complexity to Scotland's genetic and cultural landscape. Their contributions remind us that Scotland's history is not one of isolation but of interaction, waves of people coming together to create something uniquely Scottish. One of the most fascinating aspects of Scotland's genetic story is its regional diversity. Scotland is not a monolithic entity, and neither is its genetic makeup. Different areas of the country tell unique stories of migration, settlement, and ancestry, offering a vivid picture of Scotland's complex history. The Highlands, with their rugged terrain and remote landscapes, are often associated with a purer Celtic identity. Genetic studies confirm this to some extent. Highland Scots tend to carry more Celtic and Pictish ancestry than their lowland counterparts. This is partly due to the region's relative isolation, which allowed these ancient lineages to persist with minimal external influence. In contrast, the lowlands, closer to England and continental Europe, exhibit a more mixed genetic profile. Here, Anglo-Saxon and Norman influences are more pronounced, reflecting centuries of migration and cultural exchange with neighboring regions. The lowlands were also a hub for trade, further contributing to their diverse genetic makeup. The islands of Scotland, such as Orkney and Shetland, tell a different story altogether. These regions are characterized by a strong Norse influence, with Viking ancestry making up a significant portion of the population's DNA. In some cases, Norse genetic markers are more prevalent here than in mainland Scotland, a testament to the lasting legacy of Viking settlers. Even within these broad regions, local variations exist. For example, areas near ancient Roman trade routes show subtle traces of Mediterranean ancestry, while coastal communities that engaged in maritime trade exhibit more diverse genetic profiles. These differences highlight the dynamic and interconnected nature of Scotland's history. What's particularly intriguing is how these genetic differences align with cultural and linguistic divides. The Gaelic-speaking highlands, the Scots-speaking lowlands, and the Norse-influenced islands each reflect the unique histories of the populations that shaped them. Ultimately, Scotland's genetic diversity is a microcosm of its broader identity.
It's a land of contrasts, where ancient traditions coexist with external influences. This regional variation underscores the idea that there is no single Scottish genetic identity, there are many, each with its own story to tell. Scotland's genetic history is a story of diversity, resilience, and interconnectedness. For centuries, the Scots have been seen as a proud, unified people, deeply tied to their Celtic roots. But the truth is far more complex and fascinating. Scotland's identity is not built on a single lineage, but on a mosaic of influences that have shaped the nation over millennia. From the enigmatic Picts to the bold Vikings, from Mediterranean traders to Anglo-Saxon settlers, each group left its mark. These migrations and interactions didn't dilute Scotland's identity, they enriched it. They created a nation that thrives on its diversity, blending ancient traditions with the contributions of newcomers. Genetic studies remind us that history isn't static. It's dynamic, shaped by countless individuals whose lives intersected in unexpected ways. They challenge the notion of a pure ancestry, showing instead that Scotland's strength lies in its complexity. This story also invites us to rethink identity more broadly. It's a reminder that nations, like people, are shaped by their connections, not just their origins. Scotland's story is one of inclusion, adaptation, and resilience, a story that resonates far beyond its borders. In celebrating this diversity, we honor what it truly means to be Scottish. It's not about clinging to a singular narrative, it's about embracing the rich, multifaceted history that defines the nation. Scotland is, and always has been, a land of many stories, woven together to create something truly extraordinary.